This is the Joy Bonnet from Adafruit. It's designed to fit on top of a Raspberry Pi Zero so you can make some really cool retro Pi projects. This week we designed a case to make a classic looking game controller. In this video, we'll take a look at the build process and learn how to CNC the case using the Other Mill Pro. I started by modeling the components in Fusion 360 so that I could design the case around the electronics. Then I used CAM tools to set up the toolpaths needed for telling the CNC machine how to cut the design. I made sure to simulate each operation to avoid any collisions and limited the step downs to minimize the risk of tool breakage. Once that's done, I processed the G-code and got ready for milling. I'm using the Other Mill Pro, which is a really nice desktop CNC. It's compact and fully enclosed, so I can mill right on my desk without having to worry about dust flying all over the place. To get my stock ready for milling, I need to cut my material so that it can fit within the build volume. I used a tabletop jigsaw to cut pieces from a large stock of wood. Using the rip fence, I was able to measure and cut pieces and get straight cuts. I needed to sand the edges down to get a flat surface. I think it's a good idea to cut extra pieces so that we can have them ready for future projects. It's really important to make sure the surface is nice and level to make sure you can lay it flat on the table and press down on the corners to see if it's rocking. I'm using Nitto tape to secure the material to the spoil board. This is a double-sided tape that has strong adhesion so it'll keep our stock fixed to the bed. I only need a few strips and I need to make sure that they're not overlapping. The spoil board on the Other Mill Pro is made from aluminum and it's actually faced on the machine itself so it's nice and level. To get proper alignment, we need to secure the material to the lower left corner of the spoil board. I'm using 1 8 inch flat end mill to run the first operation. This is called facing. It's basically removing material to get our desired thickness. At first I was milling from both sides, but this leaves behind really thin strips of material. They're pretty easy to remove, but later I found out how to prevent this. If we tell the operation to cut from only one direction, we can get really clean cuts. It's also cutting along the wood grain, so it's less aggressive and leaves a nice surface. The next operation is adaptive clearing. This is similar to facing, but it generates a toolpath that follows the shape. This clears the material with sequential step downs. This operation takes the longest because it's removing most of the material. Next is a contour. It basically cuts the outline of the case by following a single path over and over again. Once that's done, I needed to switch the tool out for a 1 16th inch flat end mill. I used a pocket operation to create the cutouts for the buttons. This makes concentric patterns and step overs to clear out the selected geometry. For the last operation, I used a 1 32 inch flat end mill to make another pocket. Here I'm using it to drill out the mounting holes in the corner standoffs. Once that was all done, I used a putty knife to remove the part. It's a little rough around the edges, but it's really easy to clean up. Using 320 grit sandpaper, I knocked down those burrs and got really smooth and crisp edges. I used a filing tool to get in between the nooks and crannies and with enough sanding, you could really get nice surfaces and clean edges. I wanted this piece to really pop, so I played with some wood stain to get more of a dark color. I found it pretty easy to apply using an old rag and made sure to wear gloves to avoid the mess. Personally, I don't like how it turned out, so instead I milled the parts in different types of wood. Here I have some walnut, oak, and maple. These all have a different look and feel, so I'm pretty happy that I tried them all out. For the buttons, I wanted to try out some cherry wood. I think this gives the case some color separation. Again, I'm using Nitto tape to secure the stock to the bed of the other mill. This was a lot easier to set up since the buttons are pretty simple. I faced the stock and used two contour operations to cut out the buttons. I used a 1 8 inch bit for the inner contour and a 1 16th inch for the final cutout. They were pretty easy to remove from the spoil board, I just used my fingers because they're actually pretty small. I also milled out the buttons out of acrylic, but that actually didn't work out too well because the acrylic wasn't thick enough to actuate the buttons. So here's our parts, looking all nice and crispy. Now we can move on to assembling the Raspberry Pi Zero. All we need to do is solder the male headers onto the Pi's GPIO. I actually used a 3D printed jig to hold the headers on the Pi. This helps make the headers nice and straight while we solder each pin. Once the male headers are fixed in place, we can secure the jig to a pan of ice. You'll have to solder each pin from the bottom of the Pi. Once that's done, we can move on to the rest of the assembly, which is probably the easiest part of the build. I had to shorten the header pins, so I used a pair of flush cutters to cut the pins in half. I just had to be careful not to cut them too short and keep them about the same height. With that done, we can install the Pi into the bottom half of the case. 
Then position the board so that the mounting holes line up with the standoffs. I used M25 screws to secure the board to the case. These are pretty short screws, they're about 5mm long. Next, I place all the wooden buttons into the cutouts on the top of the case. Now we can grab the joy bonnet and install it by laying it face down. Line up the mounting holes with the standoffs and fasten machine screws. And with our two halves now assembled, we can bring them together to finish this project. We just need to make sure that the pins are going into the female headers, then just firmly press them together. And that's it, now we have a pretty sweet looking game controller. This was a lot of fun putting together and I learned a lot about CNC milling. This is the first enclosure that I've fully CNC'd, so there was a good amount of trial and error that I didn't cover in this video, but hopefully this inspires you to make your own. Even if you don't have a CNC mill, the parts can be 3D printed. And if you don't have a 3D printer, you can have somebody print them for you. You can check out 3dhubs.com. Hey, if you liked this project, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to the Adafruit channel for new DIY projects every week.